Maybe your kitchen looks a little like this. You got pop cans all over, you got hair supplies, you got dishes in the dirty sink, you got, I don't know, who knows what over here. You got some groceries, house things that need to be put away, you got Amazon boxes. This is legit my kitchen almost every morning. And in fact, it's actually a little cleaner than it usually is because usually we have craft supplies over there. So I'm gonna share with you 30 tips and habits that I've implemented in my over 30 years of life with four kids running two businesses because I can whip this baby into shape like nobody's business. Business. Let me show you. And I hope by the end of this video, you are more motivated than ever before to get your kitchen in shape. And in fact, we're gonna do something super fun. I'm gonna set my timer right here. We're gonna see how long it takes me to get this kitchen looking Pinterest worthy. Are you ready? Let me know in that comments box below how long you think it will actually take me to do this by myself. Mm -hmm. Okay, are we ready? Here we go. Gotta stop for some water. These things need to be hand washed. Rinse out the sink, make sure there's no food particles left in there. Lettuce! I do deep cleaning in the evenings. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. I just go around and pick up any major food particles. We're gonna straighten these chairs. We are at 16 minutes, my friend, 16 minutes. And whatever we don't get done when our kids are here, we do immediately after they leave and then my youngest is dropped off at daycare. Not too shabby. Before we get into all the tips and tricks, I have a golden gem tip for you, and that's this. Every single item in your kitchen should have a home. That way, when you're whipping through and picking everything up really quickly, you can do it because you know where it goes. Tip number one, let's start with the refrigerator because that thing can get super disorganized very quickly, especially when you have lots of hands in that refrigerator. You wanna make sure that you have some sort of all-purpose cleaner, easily accessible. Anything I talk about here today will be linked in that description box below. Nothing in this video is sponsored. So let's just open the refrigerator this is what it looks like on average, but at least once a week or every evening, you wanna make sure that you go in and wipe everything down so that your fridge looks nice and clean. It makes you want to keep it organized when it looks nice and clean. Go through these shelves. I know oftentimes when we buy milk or creamer like this, there's little these little white particles that like to float around in here. So in the refrigerator, 
wipe it down at least once a day, I would say. And you can do a clean wipe. You don't need to take everything out and do all that, but just visually make it look better. My second tip here is have different organizers and liners. So you can see in here, I have different trays for different compartments of things. We're gonna talk about these in just a second, but these trays help keep things better organized. And then I have another one up here. If we pop down in here, I also have separate organizers. And again, I didn't go in and organize this before the start of the video. This is exactly how it is. I would say like 90% of the time, but these organizers really help you separate and contain things a little bit easier. The other little hidden gem that I have inside of here is this liner. You can see right here, this is super helpful because there's glass underneath this liner and it is a pain in the butt to take out and clean. Now you see these little food sort of scrap particles in here that sometimes are a little bit tricky to get out with your sponge. I have a little trick for you. You're gonna get yourself one of these babies. This is gonna save your life. Watch. I just love this thing. I'm obsessed. It also works fantastic in your freezer, getting out those crumbs. In fact, this is probably better than multi-purpose cleaner. Okay, now that we got our fridge wiped down, it's looking good. We're gonna come back to this in a little bit because I have some other tips and tricks for you. Let's talk about the oven. Cleaning the oven is a big pain in the you know what. So here's an idea that I have for you so you're not scrubbing. Grab yourself some aluminum foil. Dun da da! You can buy specialized liners to put in the bottom of your oven. Uh, but you don't need it, you can just use it. This is particularly helpful if you are making pizzas. You know, cheese likes to drip down there. Now you're gonna have to clean your oven way less often. And all you have to do is take this out when it gets all gunky and full of goodness. Number three, water bottle mayhem. Two solutions that I have for you. Inside, these organizers are fantastic and they're stackable. And here's my rule of thumb. My daughter always wants to get water bottles, but I tell her all of these slots are full. We cannot purchase any more water bottles. If we are gonna get a new one, then something has to go. And let me tell you this, she really rethinks that letting go of a water bottle and we're able to leave whatever store, Target, Starbucks that we're in where she wants to get one. But these are awesome. Let me just pull one out here for you. There's a couple different uh, storage solutions. We got a six pack right here. Um, we had, there's a two seater, we'll call it a two seater. Look at that. I mean, when you open your cupboard, it's very exciting. And I think it's just a great way to store everything right in here. And then we have an extra one. My other solution for you when it comes to water bottles that you're currently drinking, rather than laying all over your house, I showed this in a previous video, but it is so darn good. I have to show you again, is this. It's actually for housing wine, but I love it for water water bottles. And so we just keep it here in our corner. And then whenever I find a water bottle randomly throughout the house, I put it in this little nook, this little corner right here. And then these are still clean. People are still using them, but that looks way better than taking up all of your counter space. Tip number four, routines, routines, and more routines. It's kind of like, I'll work out later, but you know, later comes and then you don't get your workout in. I think it's the same thing when it comes to your kitchen. So every single night we run this dishwasher because it's full. So I just go in here. When I'm cleaning and going through my kitchen routine, I grab my soap, I run it. And then the next morning while the kids are sitting here eating or after they've left for school, like I talked about, then we take all the dishes out. That way it's just like easy peasy. Tip number five, what's a chore that you really hate doing when it comes to your kitchen and that you want to put off. For me, it's mopping because I got to do it when people are not awake, when they're not going to get all over the floor and slip and fall because that has happened before. So here's what I do. I have a designated day. It's Sunday mornings and I actually set an alarm on my phone when I wake up early at 4 a.m. and I mop at like 5 a.m. before my kids wake up. The alarm goes off. I know it's time to mop. I'm doing a little work. I'm getting my morning routine done. So if there's a chore in your kitchen, one, schedule it in and now Number two, put a timer on your phone to notify you like ding, ding, ding. It's just time to do that thing that you hate doing. Tip number six, what's something that gets really dirty, greasy, and grimy in your kitchen? It's your 
stove top and up above here. In the last house that we lived in, the stove had caked on grease from years and years. And here's what happened. People were not wiping that down immediately after they cooked or within that same day. So it was so challenging to get off. So every time you cook a meal, and usually this is gonna be part of your evening routine anyway, is go in, get your multi-purpose spray, and just do a quick wipe down of your stove. That way you're never gonna have that issue where you have all kinds of caked on grease and grime and then you're spending hours trying to get it lifted up. You're just gonna go in here, wipe this down. Here's the moral of the story when it comes to this as well. If you just do a little bit every single day when it comes to any of these things, you're never gonna have to like, you know, dedicate hours and hours upon end um, to trying to get it nice, clean and organized. If you have any grease along here, just quickly wipe it down as part of your evening routine and put on some good music that you like get your kitchen whipped into shape so that it's ready to go for you the next morning and you don't have to deal with caked on grease for years and years after that Tip number seven, wipe down all your countertops at least twice a day, once in the morning and once in the evening. Of course, you can wipe them down more frequently as needed. That way you're waking up to clean counters and you're going to bed having your countertops nice and clean. You, uh, you find so many sticky things on my countertops. Tip number eight, this is a big one. This is something that I've had to overcome over these past couple years, but it's an excess amount of utensils and stir things and little things with handles and cookware. So let me show you, come on in over here. These are all of our utensils nicely organized. This drawer used to be like a complete disaster. I had to go through and really decide, do I need three spatulas? Do I need three sets of measuring spoons? Go through your drawers, keep them nice and organized. Everything should have a home. Let's move over to this drawer right here. That way when you're putting stuff away as well, it's just much easier. Look at this, everything's nice and organized. Little lunch notes, we got the straws, we got the little press and seal back here. And then in here we have little baggies and little extra uh, aluminum foil, all that good stuff. Keep those drawers nice and organized and go through and get rid of some of the items that you haven't used in a while. Maybe they're just not in great condition anymore and maybe you don't need five of I don't know, something. Number nine along these same lines, many of us, and yes, I was guilty of almost all of these things at one point in my life too, are an excess amount of, I'm gonna call them Tupperware, it's not Tupperware, but different food storage organizers. We have too many lids, we don't have matches to things. We have like 20 different of these things that we're never gonna actually use. We are a family of six and this is plenty of food storage and we eat over 90% of our meals at home. So go through those, I keep wanting to say Tupperware, I know many of you are gonna be like, it's not Tupperware. Andrea Jean, go through your storage solutions, your food storage solutions, and really see if you can get rid of some of that. Two things super quick, cause I know I'm gonna get asked this. What is in this spray bottle that I've been using? It's actually this cleaner right here. It's super concentrated. You just put a little bit in. Again, I will link this in the description box below. It's amazing. It has a nice light scent. It's not too overpowering and it makes my granite countertop look nice and shiny and not hazy. The other thing is before we turned on this camera, I didn't go in and start organizing everything. This is legit how my house looks on a regular basis. So if you're like, Andrea Jean, that ain't organized. I saw something out of a place. That doesn't look good because this is real life. This is what my house looks like in what I do. All right, we're gonna talk about the dishwasher. I want you to do this once a month because it's gonna make a huge difference. Uh, I think it's about a month since I've done this. You're gonna go in here and check this filter. Yep, oh my God, this thing, it's so nasty. Come on in here, look at this. Look at this filter oh my word so we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna wash this up i'm gonna grab a cleaning toothbrush i'm just gonna use this multi-purpose cleaner i like a spray that i can use this is like a bonus tip for like everything in my kitchen that way i can clean faster and quicker let me go get that cleaning toothbrush dun, dun, dun. let's go to work 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 So much better! If you have stinky smells in your dishwasher, oftentimes it can be because of this filter. I'm just gonna put it back in here. Now, tomorrow morning, before I, there we go. Tomorrow morning, 
uh, before I put dishes back in here, you know, after I've emptied the dishwasher, I'm gonna go ahead and you're gonna do this about once a month. You could do this with baking soda, you could do this with rubbing alcohol. I like to buy things that are specifically designed for what they're made. That way I don't have to get all these products and different cleaners. Throw this in your dishwasher, run it empty, and it smells so good. Oh, smell it. It's like freshness, freshness in a bag right there. Ay, ay, ay. Your dishwasher will thank you. Number 11, it pertains to your food storage or your pantry. Now the house before this, I didn't actually have a pantry. It was just a little cupboard that you opened up and that was your pantry. And I didn't organize this before we turned on the camera, but come in here, I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks. My husband did go to the grocery store yesterday and we had all kinds of boxes around. So this is pretty standard for what it looks like. It's not as organized as I would like it, but here are my tips and tricks. Have bins that you can easily put snacks in that your kids can grab, different bins such as these. Everything in here has a station. So for example, we have breakfast things, we have chip things, we have bread things. And then these baskets right here just help reduce some of that visual clutter that you experience when you're going in a space with a lot of different shapes and sizes and colors. When in doubt, basket those goodies. Tip number 12, get stuff out of boxes as best as you can. Let me give you an example of what I mean by this. All right, so we have these macaroni and cheese boxes that Justin just picked up. I'm gonna take these out and then I'm gonna put them in their designated space. I mean, you certainly could leave them like this, but I don't like that it's on the floor. So I'm just gonna take this out of the box. If you have chips, this is what I like to do. I like to put them in clear containers like this. That way they're airtight and they're gonna last longer. And visually it just looks more appealing than having bags such as this laying around. That's why this one is down here. Kind of hidden so you can't see it as clearly. So get everything out of these, the boxes as best as you can. And then our mac and cheese goes in this area. By the way, all my three-year-old wants to do is eat macaroni and cheese. Great space saver. Tip number 13, be careful of the sales trap. You know what I mean by that? You buy an excess amount of items for your pantry and your kitchen because you're like, it's on sale. Unless you're going through a food shortage of some sort or there's a pandemic or there, you can't get the grocery store for like two months or something like that. Don't just buy stuff because it's on sale because what you're gonna end up having is an overflow of stuff that you don't know where to put it. And a lot of times those items get wasted. So for example, do we have an excess amount of stuff in here? I mean, I don't know why we have two things of jelly when we have a bunch of jelly in the refrigerator already. <laughs> My husband did the grocery shopping on that one. So I like to just have like one back of, of each item. And again, that's for a family of six. We don't need like six jellies on backup because I can go to the grocery store in a week and get another jelly. Okay, here's something else that happens. I'm gonna throw my husband under the bus for a little bit. Okay, he buys Oreo cookies to put them in the kids' lunches, which is fantastic, right? So we have all these Oreos that still need to be eaten, yet when he's at the grocery store, what did he buy? Another pack of Oreos. Now, I, oh, and, oh, yeah, so we did not need to buy another pack of Oreos. Check your pantry before you go grocery shopping. That's a big help. And then, oh, let me just tell you this. It's like Girl Scout season. I love a good Girl Scout, but man, they're relentless. Like, look at all these cookies in here. We do not need to buy any more cookies. I mean, I guess, unless, of course, it's like a really cute uh, Girl Scout. Okay, so be careful with the sales trap when it comes to groceries if you really don't need that item and then take inventory before you go grocery shopping so you know whether you need something or another. We're going back in the pantry again. So this is what I do when I get my morning coffee. I go in here and as this is warming up and bring up, I'm looking around and I'm like, okay, let me organize a few things because this takes like, I don't know, a couple minutes to heat up. So I'm going like this. I need to descale my coffee maker because well, it's been overdue. I just keep putting it off. I'll wipe something down while that's heating up if I need to. I'm noticing I don't like when there's a bunch of stuff on here. That's got to go in the dishwasher. So I'm going to like organize these, put these away, excess chips down here. Those can go there. This bread's got to get eaten. So I just go through here while I'm waiting to organize, while I'm waiting for something 
Actually, we're gonna make a trail mix. I'm gonna put that with the other items down in here. And then just do a quick wipe down in your pantry as part of your little routine. So then we wake up in the morning and it looks all nice and organized again. Number 15, recycling and your garbage. So let me just show you a little trick. I'm gonna put this away. Now, what I like to do with our recycling, we have this double system here, but we actually put them in paper bags. And then we end up just taking this and putting this whole thing in our recycling bin rather than having to like take this whole thing out, dump it, and then things are, I don't know, moving around in there. It's just a much easier way to keep things organized. So I'll go ahead, put this in my garage. And then in here, I just have some extra paper bags that I'll go ahead and put back in for my recycling and take it out when it gets full. One thing I like to do too is whenever I take this out, I like to look down here. Maybe I'll get my vacuum out and vacuum out any crumbs or again, just get my multi-purpose cleaner and a microfiber towel because I like when these look nice and clean. Um, and it's just a great way to do it is when you're taking it out, just quickly go in here and wipe down and clean it out. Number 16, this tip is gonna make your kitchen look automatically cleaner than it really is, potentially, is avoid too much clutter on your countertops. Like, so this is not the mail slot. This is not the excess dishes slot. This is not all the kids' arts and crafts slot. These countertops, like this, when I walk through here and see this countertop if there's anything extra on here it comes off the countertop same with over here we have our water bottle station this is where all the water bottles go we don't just plop things on our counter have you ever been in a house and I've been guilty of this as well when you look at the kitchen and th those countertops like there is no clear space on those countertops you just feel like you can't breathe because there's so much stuff so find a home for all of those items on your countertop that don't necessarily need to be out there I like a few pieces to make it look warm and inviting a recipe holder a little piece a little moment here of something beautiful we use these we use these and we eat that so most of the items here on this countertop we use on an everyday basis and it looks beautiful Number 17, the pots and pans situation. By the way, everything I've done here today, I've said this before, but I've been guilty of as well. Too many pots and pans. If you're a family of two or a family of three, like why is there so many pots and pans? And the little solution, um, I showed this in a previous video, you guys loved it, is this. So you don't have all these wonky handles around. Look at how nice these store. Right here, bought these with my own money. And then it comes with this. You just put this on. This is your handle and you can easily just switch this on and off. Also, if you've cooked something in here, let's say, um, I don't know, you have some pasta that you wanna save in your refrigerator. They come with these little lids that you can put on top if you want to store it like that. But now everything is nice and organized. We have a lot more space down below here. Apologize for all the clanking and it just looks much tidier and when things look tidier it makes you want to keep it that way number 18 we're going to go back to the refrigerator because i know this can be a trouble area disaster zone and it happens to be when it comes to your fruit so it comes in these little containers like this there's a couple problems with these they're clunky they're not visually appealing and i do not think they keep your fruit fresh very long. So this is what I like to do. Yes, I left some of these things for the video. In here, I have some different fruit storage solutions. So I go in here, I grab these. I don't wash them till we're ready to eat them uh, because I think they just last longer. I use a little vinegar spray or a little fruit spray. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put maybe the strawberries in here. And then in this one, I think I'll do all the raspberries. And then you can easily stack these better. Dun, da, da. There we go. Now, watch when I, I think these are. I'm on, a, I'm on the struggle train here. All right, there we go. So we put these in here. So now we're gonna have more space. And it's just gonna look nicer in there. Look at that. Okay, moving into my next tip when it comes to your refrigerator. We have a designated leftover station and it's right here, front and center. So that way when you open your refrigerator, we're like, oh, we have all these leftovers that need to get eaten so that we can make more room in here. And then stuff like this, like these little baggies, I like to take them out, go like this. So just looks a little bit nicer in your refrigerator. I'm seeing that these carrots are on their last leg. I'm gonna zoodle them up, so to speak, tonight. And there we go. 
Now, before we move into tip number 20, which I'm so sad, we're nearing the end. I wanna share something with you. You may be wondering like, what is this? This has a very specific purpose. It helps me save time and it helps me save so many different things. So this is what I do. Got a bunch of pencils over here. Whenever I run out of an item, I immediately go in here and I'll write like, I don't know, my kids love certain kind of juice. So I'll put it on here, juice. And then we just keep adding to this. My daughter will be like, mom, we're out of goldfish. I want more goldfish. Okay, she can write it when she's nine. My three-year-old, I write it up here. And then whenever we make a run, to the grocery store, we just tear this off or take a picture of it. And then it helps prevent you from buying excess items because you know that you went through here and wrote down all the items that you need before you went into that grocery store and got stuck in the sales trap. Number 20, this is one of my favorites because it is oh so effective when it comes to maintaining a clean kitchen. And that is have a morning routine. Maybe you only have 10 minutes, maybe you have five minutes, maybe you have 30 minutes. Get as much done in that time frame that you can so that you can get your kitchen back to some semblance of order. Now, are you gonna be deep cleaning in that 20 minutes? Most likely not, maybe you maybe you can. I don't know, I don't have the ability to do that with what's going on, but have a great morning routine and stick with it. Number 21, contain, contain, contain. Let me show you two ways that I do that. So in here, uh, actually I'm gonna show you three ways that I do it. We have a bunch of different vitamins for my kids and for my husband. So I have these little containers that I put them in. So for example, I can just pull this out every morning for my kids, they can easily grab it and put this back in here. We have an excess amount of scissors. Because I have four kids, they all wanna do arts and crafts and supplies usually at the same time. So I have a little container that I put all of these scissors in. That way they're just not jumbled around inside the cabinet. The other place that I contain is down here with my cleaning supplies, easy access to all the things that I use on a regular basis. So I have this bin here for all of my microfiber towels. I have this two tier system to grab the items that I use on a frequent basis. And then I have this little clear container right here that I also, maybe these are refills, um, and some things that didn't fit in this area. So when you contain your items, one, if you have more items than you have the ability to contain, you probably need to go through your items. But two, you have easier access to them and number three it's easier to maintain number 22 make your kitchen inviting let me show you a way that I do that so I'm gonna go in here just gonna grab a little lighter I love my candles so I have this little station right here and then I like to light a candle my daughter's growing some grass so she wants to keep an eye on that but make your kitchen an inviting space Put something in it that brings you joy, that makes you smile. Maybe it's fresh flowers every couple of weeks. Maybe it's a candle such as this. Speaking of fresh flowers, I actually have some here on the table that they're about on their last days, but just, just a little moment of here, something that smells great. Now you don't wanna have too much of something, like maybe you love to collect, I don't know, something or another, little trinkets. You probably don't want those lined up all over your kitchen, but make your kitchen a space that you really love and enjoy. Number 23, do you have an excess amount of plastic bags? Because let's say you go to Target, that's what they give you when you do grocery pickup. I have a solution for you. Rather than them overtaking your entire kitchen, we're gonna go in my bathroom. So in here, I have this little bag storage system. And the reason that I keep them here in this bathroom, oh, look at there's an excess. These ones can actually go upstairs. I didn't do this, my husband did that. <laughs> so I'm gonna put these in here. When I take this garbage out, I can just easily have some stuffed in the bottom as well. I like to reuse them uh, as garbage uh, bags in my bathroom. These ones are gonna go upstairs. This one can get tossed. So have a great place that you store all of those plastic bags if they're allowed in the state that you live in. I know many states have banned them, which is great. Number 25, this one's gonna save you a ton of time. If you have a burnt on pan or a bowl with oatmeal and the oatmeal solidified in there and it's all stuck, here's what I do. Just two tools. I get myself some little Dawn power wash. I love this. I spray that down, let it sit, let it soak. And then inside here, you're gonna wanna have one of these in your arsenal. Are these little scraper tools. So then you can spray it down, scrape it, rinse it off, put it in your dishwasher, whatever you need it to be. So immediately when you recognize that you have a burnt on pan, something's burnt on there that needs to get clean, spray it, wait, scrub it. Number 26, I want you to strategically place items in your kitchen. Let me give you an example of what I mean by that. So up here, I keep my salad spinner. 
because I use it twice a week. I want to be able to easily access this, put this down, cut up my salad, and then I can put it in the refrigerator. Yes, I usually do put this whole thing in my refrigerator. Our fridge, we just went grocery shopping the other day, or my husband went grocery shopping. It's more packed than it typically is with lots of fresh fruits and vegetables. Make sure that you strategically place items for when you access them. So for example, if I wouldn't go put this in my pantry because every time I need to get it, I need to go in my pantry. I would probably need to put it up high because there's not a lot of space in there. And I do get this comment all the time. They're like, Andrew Jean, it must be nice. You have all this space. Of course you can keep your home clean and organized and less cluttered. I use these same tips and tricks when I lived in a one bedroom apartment with my husband. We also lived in a couple of small townhomes. Um, our home prior to this was a bit, I mean, it was smaller than this house, but it was, you know, a bit larger, but still we've accumulated more kids. I've just gotten better at organizing and getting rid of stuff that I don't need and not buying so much stuff that I'm not going to use within the near future. It's kind of like if you were to live in New York City. I mean, you got to be real strategic about the space that you have. So work with what you have. Number 27, what's something we also tend to have an excess amount in our kitchen? Sponges and rags. One, I hate sponges. They, they just get, they're moist and they start to smell after a while. I don't like them. I have one sponge that I use on a regular basis and I keep it in this little container right here. And this is my sink cleaning sponge. This is really the only time that I ever use a sponge. What I typically clean with are microfiber towels because I can easily wash them after I've used them. They don't start to have that yucky sponge smell. A sponge, if it gets too wet, it just looks all, I don't know, like wet on your countertop and then you have to go in and dry it with something else. You know what I mean? When you use sort of a microfiber towel like that one, all you do is spray and wipe. You don't have to wipe it in. Like a sponge, you gotta spray, wipe it with your sponge, and then you need to go back in and dry it again. You know, we just cut down a step. Number 28, clean as you go. So my kids are gonna be home from school here very shortly. They're gonna unload all of their stuff. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk to them about their day, see how they're doing. I'm gonna empty their lunch boxes. I'm gonna clean out the lunch boxes, put any papers away that need to go away, sign anything, see if there's any homework, all that good stuff. So I'm cleaning as I go all about my day. And as I'm walking through my kitchen and on the weekends, let me give you a prime example. On the weekends, my house is complete chaos because all six of us are here at the same time. So as I walk through rooms, I'm just picking up stuff, cleaning as I go. Number 29, enlist any help that you can get. Maybe you do wanna hire someone to come and deep clean your house once a month. Maybe that's in your budget. Enlist the help of your kids. So when my kids walk through that door, we're gonna make sure that they hang up their coats, they hang up their backpacks, they put their shoes away, just like they would do if they were at school. My husband runs to the grocery store. If we need groceries, sometimes it's me doing it. We tag team different things. My husband and I will also tag team in the morning when it comes to cleaning up different things. Enlist help and it's okay to accept it. And number 30, my best tip of all when it comes to a clean kitchen and pantry and different daily habits that you can implement. And this tip applies to no matter what size space that you have. You have to work with the space that you're given. Rethink everything that you bring into your kitchen. <laughs> so we don't need 500 boxes of Oreos in my kitchen. I didn't need 10 different spatulas at one point in time. I didn't need 20 pots and pans. I just, I, we just tend to accumulate things over the years. So rethink everything that you bring in. Be intentional about those purchases. And number two, be intentional about going through your kitchen on a regular basis basis and really deciding if it's something that needs to stay in your kitchen area. Anything I talked about here today is linked in that description box below. Let me know in that comments box one tip that you are going to be implementing. Also, if you want to see some additional cleaning and home hacks, click this video on screen now and then make sure that you sign up for that free weekly cleaning and organizing home hack newsletter also linked in that description box below. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you, my friend, in the next one.